What's up, Ladder family? I am so excited to see you in the year of 2023. This is actually one of a, this is actually a great time to just refocus, uh, start understanding what is God wanting us to do, especially in this time in our lives. I believe that this is an instrumental part of us being able to contribute to the kingdom of God so that we can move his plan forward. And every single thing that you have in your heart, every desire, every plan, every purpose that God has, has, has placed on the inside of you, I really believe that it is your chance to start going after it in a new way, refreshed, revived, new anointing. And I just wanna encourage you that as I was praying, um, and we're going to get into the devotional, but as I was praying, one of the words, the two words, that God gave me was number one was consistency and building. And the reason why that those two words stuck out the most for me is because God needs for me to be consistent in the area of my life that he is trying to build in. And in order for us to build, we have to do it brick by brick, step by step. And we really have to be committed to the consistency that is needed for God to complete the building that he is wanting to do in our lives. So I am so excited today that you are able to join us. Listen, this is the ladder. This is our newsletter where we get to come together once a week and discuss a devotion. Uh, this is actually going to be a challenge week. Actually, for the rest of this month, we are going to be fasting and seeking the word of God. Today, we're just going to be talking about prayer and talking about the importance of it. This is so important, especially when you are going throughout your day, because you need to be connected to the inner man, the inner parts of you so that you can completely discern what God is doing, not even in the moment, not only in the moment of prayer, but throughout the day. I believe that God wants to transition you. He wants to uh, recondition or um, start refining your heart towards him, towards back, uh, back to him, so that you will be able to understand uh, why you are here, understanding your purpose, and have a clear vision so that you can go after it with full force. And so today we're going to be coming from uh, the verse Psalms 119. Uh, and we're going to start at the 89th verse and it reads your word Lord is internal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generation. You establish the earth and it endures your laws endures to this day for all things serve you. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my afflictions. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. Save me, for I am yours. I have sought out your precepts. The wicked are waiting to destroy me, but I will ponder your statutes. To all perfections I see a limit, but your commands are my boundaries. Oh my God. I, I just want to read that 96 verse again. To all perfections I see a limit but your commands are my boundary. Listen, it is so important for us to understand that God is shaping us and redefining some things in our life. It is, uh, we are sometimes so conflicted by the past um, in our present and we have a foggy vision of what the future looks like. But because God wants to come in and clear up a vision, there are certain things in our life that he needs to get out in order for us to be reestablished in who we are in him. That's right. That means to confirm your identity and what God has called you to be and who he has called you to be as well. Uh, this season of prayer is going to demand a lot, a, a lot from you. The reason why is because we can be so barred down with the attention span that, that we attach ourselves to throughout the day. Things are fighting for our attention. And whenever we are giving our attention to things outside of what God calls us to, we take our attention not only off of God, but our identity as well. And because the word of God says, seek the kingdom first and his righteousness and all these things will be added to us. I really believe that we are moving into a season where we are relearning how to seek the kingdom of God 
even in times such as these. It involves worship. It will involve your prayer. It will, it will involve your praises. And what's so important about those three aspects is that you are not doing it when you feel like it. You are not doing it when you feel like um, getting up out of the bed and worshiping God, but you are doing it as a sacrificial worship, a sacrificial praise, a sacrificial prayer at your most tired hour so that you can be able to understand what it looks like to sacrifice the needs of the body in order to gain the spiritual aspects of God. God wants us to be um, so in tune with what he has planned on this earth so that we can be able to move throughout the demonic things that tries to tear us away from his, from his love, from his spirit, from his presence. And if we are not mindful of the voice of God, we will continuously look in the other direction of where we think people are having fun or where we think um, the presence of God is at. And if his hand is not over it, we will be deceived trying to go after a good thing, but it is not the God thing. And so as we start regrouping and start redefining um, some of the things that uh, keep us close to God or, or we start repositioning ourselves to keep that will keep us close to God. I really believe that we will move into a season where we will understand what God is doing in our life in such a time as this. And that's why it's so important for us to understand the aspects and the importance of prayer. As we are moving forward, this scripture was highlighted to me. I didn't want to do, I could have, you know, went in Matthew and when the disciples talked about prayer, but I wanted to start here because I think it is so important for us to understand what is prayer and why it is, it is, why is it necessary and how should we pray? I need for us um, to really kind of uh, revamp some of the things that we have learned over the past um, about prayer because we can sometimes shy away from prayer because we don't know what to say. We can even sometimes shy away from prayer because we feel like our life does not resemble God. Prayer is the foundation that builds your relationship with Christ. It is the foundation. The reason why I want you to understand prayer is the foundation is because prayer develops the intimacy that you need in order for you to understand the reason why God loves you. Prayer separates you from the earthly aspects of things and it gives you a perspective of a God thing. And if we are not careful, we'll sometimes uh, look at prayer as an opportunity to ask God for what we want. But God does not serve us. We serve God. So ultimately, what we are doing when we are praying, we are, we are trying to tap into a plan that has already been established in heaven that God needs to be manifested on earth through you. And the reason why this is so important is because you need to understand your part in the plan. Prayer reveals what God's plan is for your life. That's why the word of God says, our father who art in heaven, meaning I am reverencing you as a group thing, as you are the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the, the God of the president, the God of who people will sometimes exalt before you. You are the God of all the idle things. You are the God of our needs. The word of God said that he is our Jehovah Jireh, the supplier of our needs. You are the God over our needs. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We reverence in your name. Your kingdom come, watch this, on earth as it is in heaven. The whole point of prayer is to manifest heavenly things in earthly places. And in order for you to manifest heavenly things in earthly places, even when you are in the earth, you have to be more in tune with what is happening in heaven and not be distracted by what is happening on the earth. And prayer reveals to you what God plans is so that you can align your values, your desires, your will to the plan of God. And he will reveal to you how you are supposed to operate in those things. So I am highly encouraged today 
that your prayer life will be elevated to another level. It will not be elevated to a level of your understanding, but it will be elevated to a level of a God thing. If the word of God says that he wants to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can ask for or think, then we have to be mindful of understanding what God wants to do that is beyond what we can even imagine. So our goals, the things, our plans for this year are there. We are imagining where we should be. However, God also has plans and he does not want your plans to come before his plans. His plans are to prosper you. His plans, it will lead you to a good end. And that's why we are so, that's why we have to understand that the plan of God is to nurture us back to him. So we start with the scripture of understanding in Psalms, you know, 119, 89, that your word, your word, O Lord, is internal. It's the same today, forever, today, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Your word is internal and it stands firm in the heavens. This is so important for you to understand is because the word of God is not only powerful in the earthly realm, but it is powerful in the heavenly realms. We can sometimes discredit the power of God because we don't have a clear understanding of the heaven God that we serve. If your God is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, your, your, your God stands outside of time and creates you in, in two times, then that means your prayer request can be beyond what is even imaginable for human comprehension. That's why it's important for you to understand the power of prayer because God is waiting to to do a mighty move on the earth, but he is waiting for he is waiting for a person to do it through because his word is so strong. He gave men the word of God says back in Genesis that he gave men the dominion over this earth. So if man has the dominion, he has to operate through man in order to uh, in order for the dominion of heaven to be exemplified on earth. The scripture says in that 90 verse, it says your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish earth and it endures. The reason why his faithfulness continues is because he is a God and he is in the word of God said Um, that God is not man that he shall lie, nor is he man that he shall repent. A lot of us are looking at God through, um, uh, through, uh, the lens of human characteristics, but God is outside of human characteristics. He's a good, good father. He's a perfect God. So we have to understand that there are certain things that can contaminate, watch this, our view and the image of who God is in our lives. Don't allow your expectations of what you thought him to be contaminate who you know or who you read or the relationship that God has established in your life. In other words, don't let your experiences, your failed expectations, put a label on the almighty God. His faithfulness continues who he is as a person continues. And so we want to be mindful of what God is doing, not only in this day, but in a day forevermore. But I want to, I want to, um, we're getting ready to close, but I want to put emphasis on the scripture here. And it says to all perfection, I see a limit, but your commands are my boundaries. Prayer helps you establish boundaries so that you can continue to walk towards God and not to the plan of man. Listen, I want to pray. And I want to pray that through this fast that we are getting ready to do, that you are encouraged, that God re uh, re uh, just clarifies the vision that he has placed on the inside of you. He put more of himself in you and take out of you anything that will block the blessings of God on your life throughout this year. So, Father, we thank you. You are the gift of prayer. 
Please open our hearts for us to understand the purpose and the principles in the coming months. God, we thank you because you are the Lord of Lords and the King of, King of and the Kings of Kings. God, we give you honor because there is nothing like you. Visit us. Confirm in us. Give us a heart that wants to serve you so that we can continuously be the people that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.